Hey folks, John here. Well, I've got my panels uh, put on top of the toy hauler and uh, I've been waiting for all my uh, other parts to come in and I finally uh, broke down, spent the money and uh, ordered uh, a couple extra pieces that are uh, needed for the solar install. So right here I've got the uh, Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller, the 150. That's the total voltage that I can pump into the uh, into it, and it's going to output up to 70 amps. I bought it from Arizona uh, Wind and Solar, a quality company that I've heard good things about that has good customer service. I know for my install, that's probably might be uh, uh, maybe overdid it a little bit with this particular charge controller, but I had a lot of panels up there, and with this one, I'll be able to you know harvest uh, sunlight early in the day. And then later on into the day and put out as uh, many amps as I can there to try to get my battery uh, pumped up. To use that 12 volt uh, energy I need an inverter so I bought the Jandal 2200 um, watt inverter. This company is out of uh, Australia and uh, I've read good reports on their customer service. I did hook this up to my battery uh, last week and took the microwave out of the camper and hooked the microwave up to it and it runs the microwave with no problem. Uh, I also hooked up uh, a heater. It handled the heater with no problem. Uh, the only setback I had was the BMS on my battery has a 150 amp uh, output limit and uh, I was hitting that 150 amp and as soon as it hit the 150 amp it would uh, turn off. So uh, I don't plan on using an electric heater and pulling that many amps, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now this is a 2200 watt model and I don't plan on ever pulling 2200 watts. Uh, my air conditioner uh, heat pump uh, will run 900 watts, 920 watts at full power uh, putting out heat. Uh, so I wanted to uh, not go use about half of the possible output on this uh, just to make it long lasting. Uh, I know 2200 watts is a lot but uh, I don't plan on using that so I've heard good things about this company also. Now from the uh, solar panels to the solar charge controller I need a way to disconnect the wires um, or to cut the power off. So the way I've done this is with this uh, circuit breaker. Uh, I'm not really using it as a circuit breaker because it's not really required, uh, but what I'm using it for is just a, auto, a cutoff, so I can just go ahead and cut the power off from the solar panels. Now my battery in the previous configuration uh, was quite tall, but I did have handles that I could use to carry it around, and the BMS here was mounted on top in these slots. Well, I'm moving it uh, to a one shelf up in my camper and I do not have the height on that shelf so I had to cut this down and move the BMS into this position down here so I had to redo some wiring and whatnot and so this is the the new uh, um, version of my battery so what we're going to do today is go ahead and then do some modifications to my wire inside and try to get this stuff hooked up I want to run the wire I already have the wires coming through the roof uh, for my uh, charge controller there, so we'll try to get that hooked up today. Well, I was working uh, diligently all day yesterday and didn't seem to get anything done. I spent uh, several hours driving around town trying to find fittings and whatnot. Uh, but anyways, so what I did yesterday, I had to, um, the shelf that I'm going to be placing my uh, lithium battery on, which weighs Oh, it's about 50 pounds. The shelf wasn't, uh, I didn't have enough support on that shelf to support that battery. So I had to do a little carpentry work yesterday and uh, make a, another cross brace to hold up that weight. Got that placed in there. And then uh, what I'm doing here, the shelf that's on the, the next shelf that's over is going to hold the um, inverter here. And so what I've been doing is working on an inverter. And let me show you what I've done so far. So the inverter is going to be placed uh, on the shelf. Just This is the shelf. I'll be able to pull it in, pull it out uh, without too much trouble. So I've got a couple of bus bars here, the positive and negative bus bar. Uh, right now I'm fabricating um, 
the wire for the chassis ground, uh, which will run from here over to there. So that's what I'm doing right now. This is the inverter chassis ground going over to my one of my negative bus bars there. I bought an interesting tool the other day. I saw it on YouTube, of course. It's a uh, crimper for putting, um, well, I'll just show you, okay? The kit came with uh, this crimper right here and a whole set of, it's a terminal assortment. And they come in uh, different sizes here and they're all different colors. So I've got uh, 12 gauge flexible right here. So the yellow is a, so what I'm going to do is strip these wires back the appropriate length, place the uh, wire in there, and then you take this crimping tool and put over the top and you squeeze it. It makes this, it's a ferrule is what they are. And it's going to make a square ferrule that you can slide in here and use your screw to set it in place instead of just putting the bare wires in there and smashing the wires down. You can see it's round right now. And put the wire in and take the crimping tool. Okay. okay, there you go. Now you have a nice square ferrule place into and then cinch it down with the uh, screw. Okay, in my last video, I had the uh, panels installed, but I had not yet hooked them up. So here's my entry gland going into the trailer. I've got my pigtails here, goes in, watertight connections, waterproof gland. I used uh, butyl tape underneath, and then I also went ahead and sealed it with uh, Lexel. L-E-X-E-L, -E Lexel. And my panels, we had some rain the other day and they got, they got water on them and you can see they're pretty dirty. They're still putting out some pretty good power. Well, looks like we got it in there. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but instead of using just a bare wire, uh, what I did was I used the ferrules, a uh, crimp ferrules. So uh, I tried, went ahead and tried that method. All right, now y'all didn't think I was gonna leave it like that, did you? Go ahead and brace it up a little better, a little more. Did some hardwood flooring in the house a couple weeks ago and I had quite a bit of, well, I wouldn't say quite a bit, but I had a few pieces left over. It makes good uh, little bracket material here to the shelving supports and whatnot. Holy moly, that was a chore getting that in there. All right, well, what we got there? Nice, sturdy little door here. Off, up is on. Secure, it's not going anywhere. All right. Now, finally, <laughs> now, We've got the wires coming through our, our cutoff box. Our next step is going to run these wires into our solar charge controller. And, uh, and I definitely want to make sure that I have my solar charge controller connected to my battery first before you go to solar power. Uh, I believe that's a big no-no if you do it the opposite way around. So I've got these uh, cut off 
in the off position. Now let's double check. Yep, off position. So no power coming uh, from upstairs. Even though I'm under a shelter, but I do have a there. There is some sun hitting the panels up there. Matter of fact, I think. Uh, well, let's go out here and see where the sun's at right now. You see the sun's right behind me. It's very low in the sky. And uh, let's jump up on the roof and see if there's any sun on the panels. Now you can see there is a tiny bit of sun on them panels. Let's go inside and put the meter to it and see what kind of power we got coming in. All right, I'm getting 91 volts. Of course, I have no idea how many, how much, how many wattage I'm getting right now, but. Just that little bit of sun up there is uh, producing 91 volts. Like I said, the next step is my Victron uh, 150 70 uh, charge controller. So that'll probably have to wait for tomorrow. It's getting late in the day and uh, looking forward to putting it Okay, that. I've got my solar charge controller installed. I used that uh, wood flooring leftovers that I had, made some nice strong braces. They're solidly mounted to the frame. The uh, controller is mounted with some rubber isolators in the back. I've got my power uh, coming in and power going out, so that's a good solid mount right there. Of course, it's all uh, Bluetooth. I can check all the parameters and uh, the, what's going on with my solar charge control with Bluetooth. I really like it. I didn't want an automatic transfer switch. They're pretty big and bulky, so I got a, uh, a manual transfer switch. Now, this company is called uh, C3 Controls. And they make uh, all different kinds of switches for uh, uh, industrial machinery. And uh, it's a interesting uh, switch because this part where you wire up pulls out of the actual switch itself. Um, there's only a three millimeter uh, thickness uh, that this switch uh, can be mounted on. That's the, the maximum thickness of the whatever you're mounting it to. So I had to make a little flange. Uh, and what I used was uh, the aluminum that was left over from my trailer when I cut out my windows. I've kept that and I've used it for all kinds of little projects. But anyways, so I made a little mounting flange here and I drilled a, this is a one and a half inch diameter. So I drilled a one and a half inch diameter a hole in my cabinet. And then this will be mounted on the outside and then from the inside, uh, you can use, you can wire this up and then it's just a matter of pushing it in like that and you flip this red switch right here and it locks it in place. So it makes it easier to wire up and then you can just lift it, put it in place and, and lock it. So, so right here is uh, where I've got the one and a half inch hole and that's going to be mounted right there like that. Let's go on the other side and take a look. Uh, what's really cool about this switch is it just pops into place like that and locks and uh, your switch is in place and then you just run your wires so i will be putting a little extra brace on here to kind of heavy uh, switch so i'm going to go ahead and brace that up a little bit Okay, folks, uh, I'm pretty excited right now. I've just completed uh, putting in my solar system and uh, backed my truck up out from underneath its uh, shelter, uh, my RV uh, out from underneath its shelter, and into the bright sunshine. Uh, today's the um, 13th of December. It's 1135, so we're probably at the best part of the day uh, for this time of year for sun uh, 
collection. Uh, but the angle, I'll go outside in a minute and I'll show you the angle, but it's re really a bad angle. But uh, I've got the Solar Victron M MPPT 150-70 model. Uh, I've got a uh, Giendel 2200-watt inverter. And up here, I have the uh, solar cutoff. Uh, this particular model is a Bluetooth model, so we're going to go ahead and fire up the Vitron Connect app. And let's see what it says here. Uh, it searches for uh, the unit. That's mine right there. And it's connecting. And it says zero watts. That's probably because we have the... Uh, we have the circuit breakers thrown up there. So let's go up and throw the circuit breaker. All right, let's see what kind of uh, wattage we're going to be getting. There it goes. Took a minute. We're harvesting 600 watts from our MPPT. It comes down here and goes into my 280 watt hour battery. Here's my positive and negative bus bar for my DC system. And I have a Anderson connector. Heavy duty, it's good for like 250 watts. But anyways, and it goes into my battery that I've got mounted right there. So I can disconnect this battery by just pulling this uh, Anderson connector apart and then just unscrewing the, the mounts and just slide my battery out and then I can remove it to do maintenance or whatever. This is my... Uh, RV power center. But first I want to pop up here and look at my manual transfer switch. The connectors on top are for position one and the connectors on the bottom are for uh, number two. So this switch uh, isolates the shore power from my uh, inverter power there. And uh, it looks like we're harvesting the 44 amps worth of power right now from our uh, this is the reading from the BMS okay we're outside and you can see uh, I've got the trailer out in the Sun you can see how low the Sun is in the uh, horizon there and the angle, those uh, solar panels are flat. So not the, the best angle in the world, but still pr pulling some pretty good wattage uh, out of those panels for uh, this time of year and uh, these angles. I'm pretty happy with it. That's why you, uh, you over panel. Uh, the panels are cheap uh, relative to the rest of the system. So you might as well, you know, put as much up there as you can. Because on a day like this, you can really, you know, take advantage of what little bit of sun that you have and the angles and whatnot. So even with the over paneling it, uh, it's, it's worth it.